Hi, this is Mark Meyer from Martech Hero. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect Stripo to a data source using AMP. A data source is just a place where you can pull information into emails. So in our example, we're going to use Google Sheets as the data source. So the info that is in Google Sheets will automatically be pulled into our email. And if the data in the Google Sheets is changes, then that will also automatically update the email. So why would you want to do this, you wonder? Well, let's say in your emails, you want to always pull in a couple of uh, recent article posts from your blog or website. If you set this up with a data source, then you would just need to update that info in your Google Sheets, and then that will automatically update the email, which saves you a lot of time. To have this dynamic content work, we will need to use what is called an AMP list component. Uh, all that is, is the component that allows you to use dynamic content and updates it in real time. So your email recipient will always see the most up-to-date content when they open your emails. So in this video, I'm assuming you know the basics of Stripo and how to use the editor. But if you don't, I do have another video on this MarTech Hero YouTube channel that walks you through all of that. So you could take a look at that too, if it helps. So first, let's take a look at our data source, which is the Google Sheets. So I already uh, created this Google Sheet. I just called it Stripo Test. And I have four columns of data here. I have the title, which is this, the title of the article, the URL, which is the link to the actual article, the image URL, uh, which I abbreviated as IMG URL, which is just the image for that article, and then the text blurb. So please note that the, the names of the column are like title, URL, IMG URL, and text. So we'll have to pay attention to that because we're going to use those exact titles later. So now I'm going to jump over to Stripo. And when you're on your Stripo screen, once you're logged in, over here on the left, you'll see something that says data. So I'm going to select data. And up here, there's two tabs. There's services and data sources. I'm going to select data sources. And down here, I'm going to connect a new data source. So I'm going to select that. And we just have to give this a source name. So I'll just call it MarTech Hero Sheet, since we're using a Google Sheet. And then we want to pay attention to this URL address. In fact, we're going to copy this because we're going to need this URL address later on. Okay, the data settings section, um, we could use JSON if we want, or like I said, Google Sheets or public RSS or a file. We're, like I said, we're going to use Google Sheets. So I'm going to select Google Sheets. And then it's asking us to connect to a Google Sheet. So I'm going to select this. Google button here, and then a pop-up comes up that says choose which Gmail or Google account you want to connect to. So I'm going to select the one I want. And then just says Stripe will wants to access your Google account. So I'm going to say allow. And in the spreadsheets, I'm going to search for the one we created, Stripo test. And here it is. So I'm going to select that. And as you can see down here, uh, it pulled in the same data that was in the Google Sheet. So it's just saying this is the column titles, uh, which, we'll, like I said, we'll have to come back to and use those later. And everything looks good. Um, over here, this checkbox, if I didn't want to include like the title for some reason, I can unselect it. Uh, but I do, in fact, want to include all these columns. So I'm going to go ahead down here on the right and hit Connect Google Spreadsheet. And it says the data so source uh, MarTech Hero Sheet has been updated successfully. And right here, the connection is active. So we're all set on our data source. Now we're going to go over and design an email. Okay, now I jump back to the main uh, editor screen where we're going to create a new message. So I'm going to select New Message. And for this one, we're just going to use a basic template. 
And just the empty template would work fine for us. And it gives us this little structure layout of a few columns and things. We actually don't need all this. So I'm going to delete this top uh, structure and this bottom uh, footer structure. I don't need that. I really just need a main structure area. And so in here, we're going to actually just design what we want the email or this part of the email to look like that's going to be dynamically populated from our Google Sheet. So I'm going to pull in an image. And then I'm going to pull in a text and I'm going to put that in under the same structure. So it's still in the same structure here. And then another text. And then we'll say a button. And we might as well say a spacer at the bottom. So for the image, uh, we can just put anything in there just for a filler. Um, so I'm going to select something here, the sample image. And then for this section right here, I'm going to change it. I'm going to say title and we're going to make this a heading. Now it's best to design this exactly how you want it to look uh, once the dynamically pulled data from the Google Sheets populated. It just makes it a lot easier if you design it all first. Uh, for the button, maybe we'll make this more of a black. Um, and for the label, we'll say read more. There's a link here. We're going to have this dynamically populated, but we just want to put something in there for now just to make it easier to find later. So I'm just going to put, we'll just put example.com. And maybe on the title here, let's give it a little padding so it's not so right against the image. And maybe underneath the text. There's a little bit more padding. And actually for this button, um, we can love justify it. And like I said before, I have uh, more, another video about how to like design an email and stuff. Uh, more information on that if you watch that video. We'll turn off this border so it doesn't look like that. Okay, so basically it looks like this. So that looks good enough. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this structure by clicking on it. And you can see it's a structure here and it's highlighted. Now, when it's like that, I'm going to scroll down here in the left and I'm going to click this HTML button just to, so it's classic HTML. And you'll see this little HTML tag showed up here. Now I'm going to hit the code editor. And here's the code for what we just created. We're going to want to copy most of this, but not quite all of it. Basically, we don't need this top line. We just need wherever it says table width, 100% cell spacing, cell padding equals zero. Uh, we need that, and we just need that whole table. That's all we need. So we're going to copy all that. So it goes all the way down to there. And I'm just going to right-click and then hit Copy. And now that we copied that, I'm going to switch off this code editor. And then I'm going to add another structure underneath this. So I'm going to go over here on the left and Structures. In this big structure, I'm just going to drag it right underneath it. So you'll see we have two structures here. We actually don't need this one up here anymore. We're not going to do anything with it, and it's going to actually just cause a little confusion if we keep it there. So I'm going to highlight that, and I'm just going to delete that. Now we just have one empty structure, but remember we said we're going to copy that HTML into here. So I'm going to go over here to Blocks, and to add HTML, you use this little block called, you got it, HTML. I'm going to select that. I'm going to click on it, and then it opens our HTML editor down here. So I'm going to delete what's there, and I'm going to paste in what we just copied. And as you can see, it put back our design that we mocked up here. So there's a few things we have to do now. Uh, first, we have to tell this HTML that we want to use um, the dynamic data from our Google Sheet. And we want to use that, it's called an AMP list to pull in that dynamic data. So here's the code we're going to copy in, and I'll put this in the comments section as well in the, this YouTube video. 
But basically, we're going to copy this. It's, it has this amplist tag in the template tag. We're going to copy this. And we're going to put it right at the beginning of this. And as you'll see, it has something called the amplist layout has something called a source. So this is just the like the default source that Stripo uses for their demonstration purposes. Uh, but that's actually not the, the source we want to use. If I bounce back to the data source configuration, you'll remember when I configured this Google Sheet data source, there's this field called URL address that was populated automatically. So this is actually the source we want to pull. So I'm going to copy that by clicking Copy. Then I'm going to go back to our template here. And for that source, I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to paste in this data source that's tied to that Google Sheet. So it looks like that. Now you'll see that we have this amp list layout tag and this template tag. So we bounce back to our code. We're going to have to actually close those two tags too. And I'll put this in the comments as well. So we're going to copy these two tags. It's just closing these two tags. And we're going to go all the way to the bottom uh, underneath table. And then way down here, hope you guys can see it. It says template and amp list. So I just copied those two closing tags. So now these two tags are just closing these tags, which we opened up here. So that looks good. The next thing we want to do is we want that image. If you recall, I just threw in that uh, static image up there. But we want that to automatically pull in the image that's in this image URL field of our Google Sheets. So we have to tell this HTML content that we don't want it static. We want that dynamically pulled in. So here's the code we need for that. And I'll once again, I'll copy this into the comment section. So what this is doing is it's saying that for the href, get the URL. And this URL is just from our data, our data source here. This is pulling from this field. So the URL is pulling from this field. And then it says title. That's just the alt tag. It's pulling right from this. And then the image URL, which is actually the source of the image, is right here. So anything that's in this curly bracket, curly bracket, is going to be automatically pulled from our Google Sheet data source. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to jump back to the template editor. And we need to find where the image is. Well, it's right here. It's You can see it says block image. And then here's these A tags that it put in already. But this is just a static one we put in there. We don't want that. So I'm going to hit delete. And then we're just going to paste in what I just copied. So now it's going to dynamically pull the image from our Google Sheet. Now we got to do that in a few other places too. So I'm going to scroll down and you'll see right here that H1 I created, I just called it title. So I'm going to put curly bracket, curly bracket, title, because as you recall, that's what we called that column from our Google Sheet. If you called it heading or headline, you would put curly bracket, curly bracket, headline, curly bracket, curly bracket. In our case, it was just called title. And this one is called text. So I'm going to put curly bracket, curly bracket, text, curly bracket, curly bracket. So that's dynamically, dynamically pulling in the text. I'm going to go down a little bit more here. And for that button I created, I said, I'm just going to put in an example uh, website just so we could find it easier. And this is why we did it because now we could easily see that there was a link added. But instead of example.com, I'm going to remove that. We still want the quotes in this case, but I'm going to put curly bracket, curly bracket, URL, curly bracket, curly bracket. And that should be all the places. So we changed the image, the title, and the text. So this all looks good now. That's all we have to do for this. Um, over here on the left, the only thing we have to do is this is using AMP H HTML um, because we, we're pulling this in dynamically. 
So we just got to toggle this by pressing this. For some reason, I always have to press it twice. But we, we select it, so now you can see it's selected. And up here, it says HTML uh, with a little like lightning bolt. So now that that's selected, I'm going to go up here. And I'm going to click the Preview button. Let's just see if this works. And as you can see, it is correctly pulling in the data from our Google Sheet. So this why you should use an email IP blacklist monitor, it's, it's pulling in. Everything's working fine. Um, if I click on this link, it should take me to the link that I put in there. Yep, it's, it's working. So that's basically how this whole thing works. It's, it's pretty slick. I'm going to back out of this. So let's go back to our data source. And then let's just add something to uh, test this change. So I'm just changing the title just slightly right here to test this change. So what we should see is when we go back to our template editor, and once we go back to preview, there you go. It says test this change. So that's how this whole thing works. Anytime you change any of this, it's going to automatically change your email. So let's say next time or you posted a new article, uh, you can just put in the variables here. And once that's saved, it just automatically shows up here. So that's how it works. So another thing you could do now that we have this created, let's say you always want this on the let's let's say you want the last two recent posts on the bottom of every single email you ever create, but you don't want to go through this every single time. If I select this structure and over here, one of the options is this little arrow pointed down. It's a save as a module. I'm going to click that. And then it says, give it a module name. I'm going to call it recent articles. And I'll just say dynamic since it pulls from Google Sheets. And I'm going to hit save. So now let's say I go back to my Stripo homepage. Let's create a new message. And once again, I'll just click basic template. And this empty template again is fine. But this time, instead of going through all that work, not, not that it was that much, but instead of going through all that work, if I go down here to modules, um, let's see where it is. Recent articles dynamic right here. I'm going to just pull that and plug it right here, drop it in. It's dropped in. And then uh, let's just preview this. There's nothing else in here except that. And as you can see, it, it pulled it in. Um, so you could add this to the bottom of, of all your emails if you'd like. Or, uh, you know, once you create it once, you could just save it as a module and keep reusing it. Uh, so it's a great way. It's, it saves a ton of time. And it's a great way to do this. But... That's about it. But if you have any questions or comments, uh, just let me know in the comment section below. And thanks a lot for watching.